as you can see, <coughs> we've had quite a bit of snow this winter, especially at the end of February and start of March. But there's been quite a lot. This is the first time <coughs> that this bike has been out since Christmas, literally on Christmas Day. It was the last time I've been on any of the bikes. I hadn't even started them until a couple of days ago. So this is really just a bit of a, well, like a shake down run to get, get used to it again. It sounds silly, but uh, you, when you haven't been out on your bike, everything about it is, is kind of, you've got to relearn it a bit. Uh, even d d things like where your boots are and things, and where they were. And then I discovered that I bought a different jacket in the autumn. It's a wax jacket style, rather than like a textile. And, and it's surprisingly, it's rather bulky to fit in my gloves that I prefer in the winter. They aren't particularly heavy gloves, but I like them because they've got good dexterity. I do actually have some thicker ones than this, when it's really cool. These are sort of intermediate. But uh, they're really... The cuffs are a problem. They may get better when you get used to it. Just a, and also, I have got a thick jumper underneath, which is making them more bulky rather than just a shirt or a sweatshirt. Caravans. If in doubt, go down through Rosedale. So I have no idea where I don't particularly want to go anywhere. But I just wanted to see what it was like down this road, because this road was, this road was closed for a while. Well, they all were, really. But obviously this one was not easily cleared. This ramp, I wonder if it's slipping away again. Yeah, see that that spot there? It keeps dropping away. And they put a little patch over the crack. What's uh, surprising is, see down this side here, there's a new little curb and a drain down there. You see the this uh, tarmac strip is all part of it. And that was supposed to help stop it doing that. That's a surprise. Crooker delivery, mind them maybe they do weekends. See the weather station. That uh, little shop called Grey's on the Green, there's a weather station just behind there. Making new hard standing pitches. See, the thing is, Easter this year is early. Well, quite early. Okay, good Friday. It's Good Friday the 31st. Anyway, it's more or less the very last day to the moon. So you'll want to uh, be ready for that. We shouldn't fire away to well, two weeks really. Looks like um, an old Volvo. 
That would be my guess from this distance. I don't know what it. It isn't possibly a Jaguar, but it doesn't look big enough. It's a C wrench, that's 1964, uh, probably 64, 65. Those are coming on well. Look how big these have grown. It's quite striking, you see. Oh, I've got some new tubes there. That was, that's, they've cleared that in at least two parts. And the house down in the bottom. You see that the more they've finished that, they were basically gutted that because it had some structural problem. I still, I'm not convinced yet that it actually has power to it. But now you might you might decide not to have power to it. And somebody's learning to drive. I think that's a new sign. Is that a very substantial pub there being to sell for well it was definitely to sell late last early last year to 18 months at least there's a sign up there that says private woodland that, that little woodland I think it belongs to it maybe people were starting to take advantage because there's nobody going and nick some wood <laughs> Well, they, they used to be quite, quite. So you see, there, there's some trees sawn up. They used to sort of manage it. Somebody's gone down there into the parapet. Good, come this way as well with a Volvo thingy. See, this this farm here, I think it's it's always been like a bit of a stately, like the local landlord as well. But all these little buildings around the side have all been sold off. But uh, seem to be struggling a bit with them. It was run on like very traditional lines. I'm not sure that Volvo cable will be after all that. But anyway, they used to have an extremely generous number of staff, and uh, the owner at the time sold it, and. Uh, they all got a really large payout. It was like tens of thousands, like part of the proceeds, really. I assume that the the original owner had died or something. Or I don't know. But anyway, they've, they've all got a really generous payout. Hang on. Yeah, that's a good spot. So now I've got to take my orca gloves off. See, I've taken a picture of this before. Is that? Oh, little spot. The first time or two I use this, I messed up with the focusing because if you use wide focus, it starts to focus on the trees nearby and things. Well, I'm just uh, 
looking at the, this is one of my favourite spots for a little ride out, which is uh, on between Appleton and, well, between Appleton and Rosedale really, I suppose. And uh, it's always interesting, because as soon as you get to here, you're like up on the limestone and uh, lots of uh, different, really nice spring flowers along here, like primrose in that book. That's my little bike, my winter bike, winter hack bike. It's slightly overexposed, never mind. With my naughty, I've got a very naughty little small number plate on at the moment. I, my original one, was like too big, it looked ridiculous on it. So I, th I thought I'd order one a size smaller and I made a bit of a mistake, I got one too small. It's a... With my Sony, I just wonder if I can... See, one of the problems with a with a Sony RX is the sound, because it's only got the onboard sound, you can't plug a mic in. So I have options, I have the option is to record sound on this one, which I'm doing now, or do a standalone thing in my pocket, which I have tried, it's just a bit of a carry on. So I can use a clip of that with this, because this does quite good sound. And uh, so this is what, People ask, well, what do you do? What do you wear when you were on your trailer? This is really like an adventure bike. And most of the time you're on the road, so I wear the leather jeans usually. One sort of, I buy these cheap on eBay for 10 or 20 pound. And then I, prefer, I don't like leather jackets, so I'm not that keen on them at all because they're too heavy. So I have a textile jacket and this is a new, new one I've got, which is a, a wax jacket. And it was about 100 quid. But I got a special eBay had 20% off everything there. So, and my boots there, old eBay again, 20 quid or something. So, I don't really care if I get covered in puddle or whatever. But they've lasted for years anyway. As long as you get them dry again, you get to home, you don't need worry. A new bench. Looks like something's fallen off. I wonder where that track goes to the left, it's behind the houses. I think this one is actually a sort of more slippy in the summer. We've got this sloppy mud and I might not go right down though. Little sports field. Ooh. Tennis court. Looks a bit neglected. I have actually come through here before with a road bike, but it was only a little one. In the summer, you wouldn't think it now. But in the summer, this is much more 
grassy, but it's not actually easy to ride because you get like these grassy roots and they're all slippy and wet. And here there's been a small trailer through or something, if not a car. It's really easy to go a bit wrong if you in these roots you can't do can't get out of them. So if you normally would ride down the middle but I can't do that here. I well, maybe could do really. There's a massive great big puddle down here as well. Hmm. There are the next one. That's that's not it, that's it's deep. Now the sun's come out again. Well, this is quite a nice. Uh, Fairly simple, easy off-road road. It's not. It's not without its hazards because this one. It can get churned with tractors, like some more of a swine herd lane. And, uh, It's quite interesting along here, actually. You've got two options, in fact. You can either go up to Gillamore, or you can take the right fork, past the, the building a new... a new uh, massive house in the... Look across there. There's a roof, metal frame building up here. But anyway, there was a, a sort of a substantial house there, but it was in quite a poor state. It had been empty for a year. I think there were some structural problems with it. But they're doing a massive amount of earth working, earth moving. Let's, let's go down and have a look. Even if we don't actually go down this way, but you can go through here. and things. There was like a big house on the low side of the road here which I have a foot on. Look at the size of the cabins and all. And then the, on the left there was like a farmyard.
look at that. Someone's planted those snowdrops there, look. But I, I'm, not, I'm not kidding, it'll be interesting to see how nice it is when it's finished. It looks like they might be retaining that. There's like a, a walled garden there. It's full of junk and building with stuff at the moment. But I think it's a shame that they couldn't retain some of it. My favourite little off road section, it's not too difficult. Yeah, it's enough to put you off. You see that big pool there. I don't like going through water, I'm always saying that because you never know what's under there. There could be a, a bit of wood with nails in for all you know, but I'm more worried about hitting a great big st stone or something. Oh. I mean a really big stone, not just a tennis ball size one. Like a brick or something that would knock your bend your rim or something. Not that I've had any problem with these. I haven't had a puncture on this bike yet. But I don't want to either because it's got tubes in it. That means I can fix it myself, but not you can't just plug it. But I like coming on here at any time, and, I, and again, I've, I have in the past, before I got a trail bike, I used to come down here with my road bike sometime. It's, it's not too bad. But it, you're just taking a slight risk of... if they've been doing something out of the ordinary, shall we say. With the... Uh, well, that's a bloody deep pool. I think there must be supposed to be a drain out of there. Oh, it's really bad. God knows what's happened in there. Because normally this is not a difficult... Not a difficult one at all. You could have come along with a car. In fact, I have thought of coming along with a pickup. But I wouldn't have liked to have gone through that. With a mini metro. Blah. It's quite bad along here. Weird. Yeah, they'll actually, they'll actually have the cheek to blame the off-road bikes or something for churning it up. This is tractor damage. Not to say they shouldn't do it. I tell you what really fucks it up is uh, if they're doing any timber extracting, that might be what they'll be doing. A bit further up uh, on a the corner, they'd been dra dragging quite a lot of wood out. Well, that was uh, a couple of years ago now, really, I suppose. And uh, it's still recovered, but it was a bit bad like. You could hardly. But that time, I didn't have these uh, good tyres on. And it was a bit worrying. I've never really got stuck like, but. Uh, The light's starting to go, it's not... It isn't even sunset yet, but it's quite gloomy. This part is barely surfaced, it almost feels like soil when you add it. It feels soft, but it hasn't been churned up too much. You, do have, you have so much more control if you just stand up on the other side here. Oh dear. Often this is one, there's another one, but I can't see one. Oh. You'd think I was doing this deliberately, wouldn't you? Choose one side and then it inevitably turns into the worst side.
I don't, I don't normally, I don't take any great delight in churning through puddles. I'd rather go when it's dry. The surprising thing, all that way on there, I never saw a snow drift and suddenly they're all, up, all over up there. Yeah. This is more like it's, it's sort of like cinders or road planings, isn't it? I'd guess road planings. It makes quite a nice surface, but it seems to go to mush quite quickly. This is where they were drawing loads of timber out of there, and it's, it's never been quite the same since. But it's all right, it's not too bad. And then another slightly worrying bit at the end of here. There's this massive great big puddle. I mean it looks like it's it could be four foot deep, but it's not. It's actually tarmac underneath it. But you feel like it feels like you're going in a boat. <coughs> a bridleway open to all traffic. Look at this. You wouldn't want to put your foot down. So the trouble is, although it, it's supposed to be tarmac underneath, you don't really know what it's like. It's deep. You would have thought that could be easily resolved, really. One way or another. And then that's it, really, that's it. I can go up another track up Blakey. I don't see a cable. to come up this one but to be perfectly honest it's it's not really a whole lot of fun. It washes out a lot. You have to be quite quite sort of uh, on the ball with it. Something I do want to do if you walk up that track there I think it's there there's a Quaker burial ground I'd quite like to see that. But it's one of these, like a lot more, it's actually easier to ride it if you sort of go faster. If you sort of tiddle about, you're, you're more likely to come to grief. You need to be kind of alert and planning, looking well ahead. <coughs> and uh, just crack on a bit. Just watch the trees, because they're quite low. A time or two before I nearly tipped myself off eating one of them trays. Ah, snowdrift. Let's 
somebody else has been doing two bikes up here, probably up, not down. An accessory you can get for these bikes is uh, uh, bigger or wider foot pegs and that's so it's sensible because you find, find they actually hurt your feet a bit, they're quite narrow. But it's quite a shock really after all this. You suddenly come out on this relatively busy road. You should just watch you don't uh, I wouldn't say hit a car. Well, can the cans and bottles start again? <laughs> 